welcome to a special edition of the DC Today. It's special because it's the Monday edition. It's special because I'm recording from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I'll be in our Minnesota office the next couple of days for client meetings and a client dinner event and all those fun things. And um, because it was an eventful weekend in getting to the end of this uh, banking system drama. So a special DC today for a few reasons. I'll go kind of quickly. First of all, just in terms of the market today, we did close down 46 points in the Dow. The futures were dead flat from when they opened last night all through the night, waiting for this announcement to come as to what the fate of First Republic Bank was going to be with the FDIC. And there were uh, bids being placed by other banks to kind of come take over First Republic all weekend. And it was more or less known that the FDIC would be putting the bank into receivership. And the announcement came uh, just as I got up at three o'clock in the morning that they were indeed putting it in receivership, uh, the FDIC, and concurrently selling the uh, bank's assets and, and ongoing concerns to JP Morgan. So essentially, all depositors uh, woke up this morning with the protection of JP Morgan. Um, all the deposits backed there. Uh, 84 branches of First Republic Bank that uh, are in eight different states in total became uh, JP Morgan. And the loans are now owned by them. The deposits are backed by them. And certainly there are losses that will be incurred, but uh, far, far less than if it had gone to uninsured depositors. And the FDIC will share in those losses with JP Morgan. So um, that sort of put an end to that systemic spread of that issue there. Now, there's still other banks out there getting their affairs in order, but this was a pretty large one. It's the second largest bank failure in American history. And ironically, both the first and second ended up going into the loving arms of JP Morgan. I, of course, refer with the first to Washington Mutual back in September of 2008. So the markets didn't have a huge response. They were reasonably flattish. I think most of this was kind of known, not the specifics, not the particulars. Uh, but you recall the market was up seven, 800 points, uh, more than that, actually, 550 and 270, close to 900 points uh, between Thursday and Friday of last week. So really, the earnings season took over what, what's going on with the markets. We know the Fed is raising rates a quarter point this week or almost certainly is going to. Um, I think the futures market closed today at an 89% implied probability of that quarter point rate hike coming. We knew of this banking drama going on, and then the market's up a lot in the face of it. So you really were dealing with kind of an um, earnings-driven response. The Dow ended up the month of April up 2.5%. The S&P was up 1.5%. The NASDAQ was up just kind of a pinch, a little flattish. Um, bonds were also pretty flat, but they rallied a lot the last couple of weeks of the month. They had been down in the first couple of weeks. Um, and in fact, yields today in the 10 year were up 13 basis points. So you had a little sell off in bonds today. Um, top performing sector today was healthcare up over half a point. Energy was down over 1% was the worst. But I think the big story to watch at S and P is, it's not a great story for index investors is that divergence between the equal weight S&P and the cap weighted, where really you do have a very small number of companies holding that index together, a very different story um, than what you're seeing, like in the Dow, for example, uh, which, is, which is in a much healthier state in terms of market performance. The... Um, FOMC, uh, the Federal Open Market Committee, starts their meetings tomorrow. They'll make their announcement Wednesday, followed by the famous Jerome Powell press conference. And we, of course, expect that quarter point hike, um, as we've been talking about for the last several weeks. Uh, the ISM manufacturing index did come in at 47.1. That's a six month in a row of contraction. Any number below 50 is contraction, above 50 is expansion. And while services, the ISM non-manufacturing has been positive, the manufacturing side has continued to be negative. You had 13 out of 18 sectors seeing contraction. 
against doomsdayism, so many negative things, so many difficult things, so many problems, both in the economy and in the culture. And I make the case all the time that we uh, believe it all represents doomsday to our own peril. Or to our, and we owe it really to a lack of understanding of history. One of the things that's interesting that doesn't get better because of the nature of what it is in the natural order of things is uh, sort of environmental, meteorological, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes. You know, these aren't things that like starvation or famine have a technological cure necessarily. So you still have kind of the same amount of these natural disasters you had 100 years ago, yet deaths, mortalities, lethalities from those, the lethal uh, consequences of these natural disasters are down over 75%. Same amount of natural disasters, but deaths only being um, uh, not quite even 25% of what they were. Why is that? Obviously, the greater uh, resolve for planning, for better construction, for better technology, for better preparation, market forces creating better uh, circumstances before, during, and after to lead to a safer outcome, even in the midst of an equal level of natural horror. Um, it's a positive thing, friends. Take it for what you will. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave it there. I am running to a speaking engagement this evening here in Minneapolis. I am excited uh, to be out here, see some of you who are clients of our firm. I'm very excited that today was opening day in Austin, Texas, our brand new beautiful offices on the top floor of 823 Congress Avenue, just steps from the Capitol uh, building in downtown Austin. We uh, are so excited to have Robert Graham back uh, chairing that office effort and looking forward to serving uh, the great state of Texas for years to come. That's all I have for the update here from the Bonson Group in the D.C. today. Look forward to coming back to you again tomorrow, Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.